It's the Polo Podcast. Hi, everybody. Andrew from Polo Reef. Actually, in my first podcast. And I'd like to welcome my two guests, JC, here to the right. Tonight we have Stephen Cooper from Aquatic Life Designs. Aquatic Life Designs does custom installations. You're a, they do you're the so, big tanks. You, mm. you do big tanks. Yeah, yeah. So we do lots of large commercial installations. Um, my, my background is in public aquariums, um, but I've been a, you know aquariums my whole life. So we've got um, kind of two parts of the business. I've got uh, my regular maintenance company that we take care of aquariums for people in Atlanta and we do mostly like corporate headquarters type work. Um, and then we also have the part of the business that um, I go off and do installations for facilities around the world. I want to know how you became that head of uh, Georgia Aquarium life support systems. Like, like what, how did that happen? Uh, yeah, so it was, it was about eight years old when uh, I got my first tank, and I don't even really remember what um, that got got it in my head, but I think I just saw a tank set up at a Walmart or something. Your aunt bought um, it for you. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, here's and, a gift. Yeah, here's well, no, tank. and I just started bugging my parents that that's what Somebody I really wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and I just kept bugging them, and so finally they gave it to me for Christmas, and they're like, okay, this will shut him up on, you know, a week later he'll be on to something else. Right. Um, um, and yeah, little was, did they know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now we're at uh, 28 years later from that, and uh, uh, still going, still going nuts with it. That's crazy. But I had my first tank when I was eight years old, and it was, it was a disaster. It was a six-gallon flatback hex tank. Yeah. With a sailfin tank. The tank police went right would to be on me, <laughs> but we didn't know any better back then. Yeah. So. <laughs> One of the ones that first got me really excited was archer fish. Um, oh, the squirt out. Yeah. Catch the insects. That's yeah. Cool. So it ended up being when I was um, freshwater. We got we yeah. got we got to get you more into the freshwater realm. <laughs> I, I was there once. I, I don't remember anything flying out of my tank. <laughs> they spit up and catch little bugs. Okay, I don't yeah. remember anything like that. Yeah. And so I I had gone into the local fish store and I had already researched a bunch of them and then they had them there. You know, sixteen year old kid in there asking for for archer fish and whatever. And she's like, oh, they're special. You have to have this. Whatever. I'm like, I already have it all. So I ended up getting him that day, told her about my whole setup, and then she asked me if I'd like, like a job. So I worked at that pet store for, for five years. Okay. And um, I was also doing maintenance and things there. Right. So I actually started my first company. That would have been, um, I think I was 21 at the time because I'd worked at there for, um, for five years. Um, and I was going to school at the time for biology. Uh, the business took off, and so I actually dropped out of school, and I was just doing the business for uh, seven years or so. And I, I, I grew up in La Crosse, Wisconsin. This reef servicing business took off? Mm -hmm. uh, well, kind of. <laughs> okay. Relatively. Looking back at it now, it, uh, maybe not as much. Right. <laughs> well, at back the time, then, it was like all the bleach, then, okay. the bleach corals. All the bleach coral skeletons. So the maintenance was necessary because you got a bleach coral in a week, it's green. You got to take it out yeah. and bleach okay. it. And I was doing a lot more freshwater yeah. systems and whatnot. Cool. Um, so I went back to school. We went for biology again. And uh, just kind of on a whim, I, I was looking up different um, public aquarium type jobs because that's what I figured I, I wanted to be at. Uh, but Georgia Aquarium had a posting on, I think, like AZA um, okay. saying that they had life support tech positions open. So I just threw out an application for it. Why not? Um, yeah. <laughs> and got a call back and I was like, oh, the thing that I've always loved is setting up and messing with the equipment and doing right. all that. So All the tinkering uh, stuff. Yeah. Yep. So I got, uh, they, they flew me down for the interview. Um, Interviewed, got the job. And they they asked you, give you a screwdriver. <laughs> we, we actually ended up finding. Out. Yeah, hired. Yeah, yeah. Hired. <laughs> right. Screwdriver, measuring tape. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Have hired. you ever have you ever glued PVC? <laughs> okay. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a huge accomplishment. Georgia Aquarium is like. Yeah. A big aquarium. It's a great aquarium. Oh I mean, yeah. No, it was a, a huge step Mac off. Daddy. I mean, it was basically my dream job. That's um, awesome. You know, I was okay, how was long there? Now, now you're tell me, take me through that. So I was there for 14 years. Wow. When I started in my department, I want to say there was maybe like 14 or 16 of us, something like that. Um, and you so, were the, the bottom of the totem pole. Yeah. And everybody That's has crazy. to start on night shift. 
because a life support there is 24 seven. The poop cleaner. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, and you know, there's all the automation and everything. So if, if something goes off as temperature or whatnot, you need somebody on hand at all times. And, 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 and by the way, when things go wrong, it's always at night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on a Sunday. <laughs> on a Sunday night. <laughs> yeah. We ended up having a leak in the aquarium one time, one of the pipes underneath the tank, and it happened oh, at like 11.30 at night on, uh, on New Year's Eve. <laughs> the, uh, New Year's Eve, there you go. Shock. Yeah. Murphy's Law. Right. right. That's it. it always so you're happens. trying to call yeah. people in, and half of them didn't even believe you. Right. And like, yeah, and hung it down. And the other <laughs> half were already out drinking. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. so, so you spent 14 years there, and now you're the head dude mm -hmm. doing commercial That's systems. Awesome. Yeah. What does that mean? Tell Tell us so, exactly what that means. So the day-to-day. -day. Uh, yeah, so the life support department is obviously uh, responsible for all the pumps, filtration, all the water movement, um, basically creating the environment for all the animals. So Georgia Aquarium is a $250 million life support plant. Um, so we're responsible for, you know, getting, keeping everything running on a daily basis, you know, backwashing filters, changing out UV bulbs. Um, you know, if we have to do a new system, we're probably the ones that are, are gluing it together. Um, you know, bigger systems we had contractors we had brought in for, but if we're doing like a 2,000 gallon system or something, we'd probably end up just doing it ourselves. You learned a lot there, obviously. Learned a ton, <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing experience. Experience is the best teacher, right? always. Yeah, there, there was a lot of things I had no idea what I was doing. I'm like, oh, I'm, I've never done this before. Nobody has, we'll, yeah. we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah, and just start it. Right. That's awesome, man. Yep. Well, uh, you did the biotopes at first, like species specific, or not mm -hmm. species specific, but location specific. Yeah. The fish from that locality, the plants from that locality, the rocks mm -hmm. and all that. How do how do those tanks differ from the tanks at the Georgia Aquarium? Because and, and how did you like when you approach setting up some of these systems? You're setting them up for people that are non hobbyists. Yeah. So how does that differ from the hobbyist mentality side of things where you're you know? So I mean, there's a lot of ways where it wasn't all that different because okay. that's what the aquarium wants to do is show you know different specific environments right. and, and, and true. things. True. So yeah, yeah, it was yeah, very yeah. applicable Amazon. to what we were doing. Yeah, they like that. I got a big question. Oh God. You are known in the Guinness Book of Reef Records. <laughs> oh Lord, here it comes. <laughs> yeah. Of the man that did the largest water Don't say change. Anything embarrassing. <laughs> water change of all time. Yeah. Of like one point something one point two million gallon gallons. water change what? that we did. Yeah. What? <laughs> that makes your tank look like a beta bowl. Like Seventeen thousand yeah. gallons. That's a beta cup. Right. We washed so, yours down the drain so, uh, daily. So <laughs> you wanna you wanna just give us a little in a world where we don't do doing less and less than water changes, yeah. why do we have to do that? And 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 walk me through the process. Um, yeah, so I mean, as far as like needing to do the water changes, it's, you know, all the good stuff gets used up and all the bad stuff accumulates. So um, we had added sulfur denitrification onto the tank and it was really taking off, um, but we were getting a lot of sulfates in the water. Oh no! <laughs> this sounds familiar, Andrew! Oh no! <laughs> How high do sulfates go? Uh, I, I do don't remember. I don't remember the the number off the top of my head. Uh, all right. But we got to a point where we're like, hey, we don't know if this is good or bad, but they are very high. Right. And so we think we need to do something to to you know counter that. Uh, uh, and, and 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 the, all you did was a regular massive water change. Yeah. But you know, of course, it gets you, complicated you, you, on that you, level. You know that there's an answer now where you you need to do a smaller one, mm -hmm. and you can fix it by using special magnesium chloride only in the mix and you don't use mag sulfate this is sure. fancy stuff man <laughs> this is bob stark stuff yeah it's good i, I know he we makes did... us three thousand gallons of it yeah every our sulfates are getting up there now like 31 3200 so but i can knock them down to 20 to normal levels mm -hmm. in one three thousand gallon water change so it's it's in the because new salt mix. He sends a special mix. Got it. Do not add. You can add the sodium bag, but do not add mag sulfate bags. Add my liquids instead. And then do the water change, and that bumps it down. Yeah, like immediately. That's crazy. Because don't you doing you doing a a, a, a non sulfur science science non sulfur water change? Yeah. Well, I know we we looked into that, and then we never ended up doing anything with it. Because uh, we, we did talk to a couple manufacturers about making a salt mix for us. Um, but in the end, we just used instant ocean. 
So all that water went the, out. The basic, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, Bread and butter and, salt. And that was for the shark. Yeah, so it's for our Ocean Voyager exhibit that has the whale the sharks. Whale sharks so it's right? 6.3 million gallon exhibit. Wow. That's um, crazy. But yeah, we, so we, we, it took 10 days for us to do it. Um, it had to do, we had to do a lot of planning with it. We had to coordinate with the city because um, they didn't want us, you know, like, ideally we would have just dumped a ton down the drain right away right. and then just filled it right back up and been done in a day. <laughs> right, right. But we had to meter it yeah, out it so proper. slowly. Um, so, we, and they, they made us work with a schedule where we could do more at night and, and whatnot. So, but on average, we were changing 100 gallons of water a minute for 10 really? days. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. How long was the planning going on? Behind, behind uh, the scenes, probably like two months or so, two three months. So you had this sulfate problem, Sheesh. and it's getting worse. Yeah. And these poor whales are like, oh my god, red tape. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And what do you? Nothing do? You, goes you fast. Feed the animals, and they eat a lot of food, so the nutrients are going to keep on going up and up and up. Yeah. Well, and, well you know, I don't remember the numbers it, off the top of my head, but this is like a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar water change to it, do that. It, it's it, it's the sulfates from the from, it's the sulfuric acid actually from the but, reactor from the reactor. That's true. And we were also, I want to say, something like 200 ppm nitrates. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and now it's, you know, single digits. You know, they, they work so, amazing. So you guys modified the react sulfur reactor after that? Yeah, we, we changed out the... It or... Yeah, well, we, we built a whole new setup. Okay. Um, you know, there was one on the system when we first started up the exhibit, um, and it was never effective. Um, we could, it could never just kind of, like, kick over. Um, so we did this redesign. So you're still doing areas. those big water changes when your sulfate goes up? No, we haven't done one since. That's the only water change that's ever been done on that exhibit. So you guys fixed it and then adjusted the system so that it wouldn't create the sulfate problem again yeah. afterwards. And, and at this point too, we've, we've kind of toned it down a lot. So where it's, you know, we had to bring it down from, from 200 right. and now we're just having to maintain it. So we actually had to like kind of keep slow it. the reactors down. That's kind of like in your reactor. We slowed it, and we took so, out, we took out yeah. media and slowed it down. Yeah. Andrew's reactor's working so good that he doesn't need the calcium reactor. Yeah, yeah. Because the, 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 the yep. calcium is high. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> it's finding that fine line. Everything in this hobby, I think, is finding yeah. that, that, that fine line of not too much, not too little, and you kind of get it right. And it yeah. always takes tinkering. I mean, yeah, you're it's part of the process. Going and every system is different, so. and the Isn't that... What life's about? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I want to get into tanks. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Brett, yeah. Tanked. I want to get a great into show. Tanked. Yeah. How you met him? How you start the relationship? Okay. And what it is now? Yeah. Um, how many? You know, and, and and all the fun stuff in between. All, all, all the good, the good stuff. Yeah. The yeah. good, good. I, I, I'm like, <laughs> do I remember that guy? In, in, with that guy in that episode? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in the background a lot. You You're know, in the background, yeah. right? There's so much oh. going on in those episodes. It's yeah, crazy. well, it's awesome, one of the man. funny things with it too is um, I was mic'd up all, for all of them, and there was very little that they ever actually ended up using. Um, but there was a number of times where I would say something funny, and they'd stop and make it, reshoot it with Brett saying it. Oh, really? Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> We've spoken to Brett. He's good people. Yeah, yeah. No, Brett's he's, Brett's he's a friend. Fun. Um, yeah. So I. When I went and worked at Georgia Aquarium, I kept my business active. I really wasn't doing a whole lot with it. Um, I did have contracts with uh, Marine Land for doing like Red Lobster and, and Petco and things, and I was oh, nice. kind of an on-call guy. So if something would happen, they'd call me up and I'd go fix it. Um, so I still had that going while I was at Georgia, uh, but it was just kind of a, a real sideline thing. Um, but yeah, the tank show came out, and I don't know why I saw it. I'm like, I'm I'm gonna be on that at some point. <laughs> you know, I just you put it on your vision chart. Yeah, yeah. I just like, for some uh, reason I was like, uh, 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 yeah, uh. like I should be doing this. How the, how they contacted people with like a maintenance company, you had to pay them. I want to say like six hundred dollars to get listed on their website, and then you would be like the the guy for that area. But any of the stores could do it. So there's like six people in Atlanta that did that. Um, and then Where was it? In Atlanta? In Atlanta, yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Um, so when it came to a company that wanted to do a tanked episode, the first one we did was this 3,000 gallon cylinder aquarium. And wow. they called up everybody and were like, hey, you know, give us a quote for doing the maintenance for it. And whoever got the quote is then who tanked would end up working with. Okay, um, got it. Yeah. That's a pain to maintenance. Wait, 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 wait. Does that mean that you put in the lowest quote? Actually, no. No. I put in the highest quote. And they came back to me and said, we normally don't do this. We always go with the lowest bidder, but we like you and we like your company. Will you do it for this amount instead? So I dropped my price down to meet it. They recognize the quality. Really? They recognize the work, yep. yeah. 
Nice. That's interesting. Story. That's great. Yeah. So that almost awesome. that kind of happened twice. The the tank that we did after that uh, was a company called Rugged Ridge, and we did a like a 1,750 gallon saltwater tank for them, and they gave the job to one of the other companies. Um, and that, that company too also tried to uh, when we were filming they tried to park their their car for advertising. Uh, yeah, they tried to park, have it's it in the parking lot. Some marketing value out of it. Yeah, they yeah. got to blur it out. <laughs> yeah, no, they, Wade went out and told them they had to move it. We, we did that first episode, and Brett and Wade loved us, and we're like, we're gonna go with you guys from here on out. So That's awesome, after man. that, they didn't even. Um, it wasn't a question who was doing the install, but it was still up to the client who would kind of take over on the maintenance. Right. And right. so they, they told us that they were going to go with the other did company. You have, did you have national presence at that point? No. I no, mean, you were just... I was just a guy in Atlanta that yeah, was okay. doing it on the side. From a Got guy it. in Atlanta to a guy right, on TV. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, so then, yeah, they, they were going to go with this other company, and Wade pulled them off to the side, and it was like, you got to go with Steve. He knows, like, this is going to be really intense when we do this, and, you know, he knows how to handle it. He's your guy. Like, if you want to, you know, give him three months, That's and after awesome. that you want to go to the other company, do it, but you need to have him take yeah. care of it right now. Heck yeah, man. Um, so we did for those those three months, and I know the company came back after that and was like, hey, we're here now. <laughs> uh, and they're like, you know what? This has been going really well. We think we're, we're going to stay with what we have. Yeah. Um, and then they also, I, again, I wasn't the lowest price. The other company got the job because they were, were lower priced. And the, the manager of the facility came out to me and told me, and again, it was like, here's what they're offering. He's like, we are a business. We understand this isn't just like a product on the shelf. Right. Um, so you know, take the weekend and think about what you want to do. And I came back to him after the weekend and said, how about we split the difference? And he's like, done. There you go, man. And, and, and your relationship now with, with Brett and, and, and the guys? We're good. Uh, so this last March, he came out and we filmed the different uh, places that we did tanked episodes. Oh, nice. We did six in Atlanta. Yeah. There's five Heck of yeah. them that we've taken care of uh, from the installation from the until until now. I We're still taking care of them. That's awesome. Coral G, right? Yep, Cor yep George. That's awesome. Yeah, so we, we filmed the couple of locations in Atlanta, and there's also, um, probably about two, three years ago, I put a thousand gallon aquarium in a wedding venue in uh, the North Georgia mountains. Oh, wow. And um, we, we filmed at that location. Um, so there's, yeah, there's the episode that, um, or there's a, a tank that wasn't part of one of the tanked episodes. Um, and if you watch that interview, it's Brett and George in front of that tank that, that was all my work. Nice, man. Yeah. Nice. How about bloopers? Let's get let's get into the dirt. Yeah. Bloopers or mishaps bloopers. that happened during some of these big installs. I don't know. I, I I think the man <laughs> I think the man should change his name to Skate Save and Abute because he saved the tanked tanks. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we I mean we, we'll we were able badge. to do uh, you name know tag. a lot of water changes and you, you right. must we, have, we were you doing must a, have you must have had to take care of those tanks. It was, it was a lot of work. I right. mean, there, were, there was a lot of pre-planning and things that went into it that you don't see on the show. Right. You know, they right. sent us cycled right. media. Right. Right. A lot of times I had the fish right. weeks in advance. Right. Um, right. But even with all of that, it was still right. a Well, a lot of these aquariums, you know, that have the fiberglass inserts with corals, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a stable, you know, you don't have the, bio, you know, the yeah. biological filtration of the live rock. You got to be taking those panels out and hitting yeah, them with hydrogen peroxide. Yeah, the question is, are they are they seeding it somehow else somehow in the biomedia or something? Yeah. I don't know. Well, they were bringing in. Uh, you said pre-seeded biomedia. Stuff, yeah, right? they would so sometimes yeah. they ship one. Sometimes yeah, I would have sandwich. my own that I would I would prep ahead of time. Right. Right. Um, right. So yeah. Right. The, and yeah, it's it's you know the show. They never is, explained that part <laughs> of the show. Yeah, I mean, and I know, you know a couple they, of times they, they should have. Yeah, but it's weird. A couple of times that they kind of tried to, uh, the ratings would go down. Because uh, it was... People is it, don't want to see science. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people want to see somebody saying, oh my God, the tank is leaking. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, there was the other show that it's came true. out. They don't want to hear the nitrites and ammonia <laughs> and the pH level. They, they, <laughs> people do not... <laughs> no. I mean, there was the other they show that tried to come out table. that uh, only lasted a season because they were trying to do the science and they were, you know, calling everything by their scientific names and explaining everything. Right. They lasted one season. Right. Yeah. Well, Brett's actually doing a, a new venture now that, that focuses more on the science behind it and helping people okay. actually understand the process. So yeah, yeah, but he's the, be... he's like the. Uh... The, gut, the little, the little, he's like in the computer. He's in the computer. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically he'll like, a video will pop up and he'll like guide you step by step. Like, right. what do you want to do next? Gotcha. Click on this video. I yeah. think that's pretty cool because a lot of people don't know this. You know, they don't, they don't know about aquariums. They don't know yeah. about the biology behind it. They don't know about cycling the tank. So it's cool that people have, can have a platform to learn about it and kind of, 
you know, inch their way in, into the, the advanced uh, hobby level. 52 yeah. weeks of BRS, and, 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 yeah. and, and, you're, and you're as educated you're as, as reading all the books <laughs> that, that I had to read and kill yeah. all those corals that, yeah. that, you, that you, you know? We've all killed a lot of corals, for sure. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, that's, that's part of the like, learning curve. The, yeah. Our scars. Yeah. The battle scars. Wait, so after, you've been doing this for 40 years. Yeah. approximately mm -hmm. after 40 years what still keeps this interesting for you what what still gives you that spark every day when you you know when you when, you, when you're doing a project you're working setting up a tank like what, what what keeps that fire burning um you know i don't know it just it's almost just like it's part of me it's just what i do so i don't know that i have like it just I don't know. It's just my nature, I guess. I don't know that I have something that, that sparks it. It's um, in your blood. Yeah. But always, like, setting up a new system is always the, the coolest part. Fun, yeah. um, and, you know, I don't have the resources to do a lot of these things myself, so I found other people to pay me to do it. There you go. And then I go on, and then I can go keep going from the next one to the next one to the next well, one. What's your average yeah. project size in, in gallons, you think? Um, so I think we, at least in the ones that I do in Atlanta, we... Um, Probably like one to five thousand is really pretty like standard that we can do those pretty well. Um, if I'm doing something for facilities, <laughs> yeah. then it's kind of in a different world, right? Because um, yeah. you know I worked at Georgia Aquarium. I also did take some time and I went over to uh, Chimlong Ocean Kingdom, which is now the world's largest aquarium, uh, oh, and awesome. I oversaw the uh, oversaw the LSS installation there to make what? sure everything was going in how it was supposed to. That's crazy, um, man. Yeah, and I did a, a, a Red Sea Research and Conservation Facility in uh, Saudi Arabia. Wow. Um, which they're about to do the world's largest uh, cool. captive coral reef. They're now you got to change his nickname again. <laughs> You're going to have three name, name tags. <laughs> three name tags by the end of the podcast. <laughs> yeah, get one that rolls off the tongue a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, obviously, I, I I think we can relate with you. It's 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 in our blood. You know, we've been doing this since we were little. It's it's mm. it's a labor of love. It's a labor of passion. So yeah, I mean, you know, w once it gets in your mind and you become enamored with it, yeah, you can never take it out of your life. Even yeah. if you stop having tanks for a little while, it always comes back and you always have another tank. Yeah, and I, I did put a, I've got a 240 gallon reef tank in my home, um, which for a long time I was kind of, you know, I do it all day and I didn't know, I didn't, you know, come home, it's a little yeah, bit right. too much like work. <laughs> um, but then eventually it's like, I, want, I just want to have my own. I want to, you know, be able to play with it and do what I want. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I do. Have we like to things. play with little, we like to move our stuff. Yeah, always just tweaking like things and, yeah. Tinkering, tinkering, yeah. tinkering. Nice, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a pleasure. And, Thanks for having and, me. And, and it was a pleasure. Really, yeah. really a pleasure. Yeah, man. Cool. Steve, great yeah. chatting, man. This is yeah, good. Been good. Fun stuff. Yep. Thanks for listening, especially to podcast number one. The podcast yeah. versions, all three <laughs> all of us. <laughs> we did it. So please like and subscribe, and God bless. Thanks again for listening. It's we'll see you next time.